Tosh Berman. This is Tea with Tosh. Uh, you must have excused me for my beard. I just got back from vacation uh, in Santa Monica. I was on the beach. Actually, my main interest is sandology, so I was on the beach for that purpose. Our special guest is Robbie Connell. Thank you for being on the show. It's an honor to be here, Tosh. <laughs> kind of like being uh, in an early Jean-Luc Godard movie. This is a Godard movie. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of feel that way. So. <laughs> Basically, what the audience has seen is the, uh, in the guest sequence was Oliver North, Lieutenant Oliver, Governor, General, Pri Major, what is he exactly now? He's a Lieutenant Colonel. A lieutenant Colonel, mm -hmm. which is, uh, Robbie's an artist, and if you're in the Los Angeles area, you definitely have seen his posters around everywhere. Uh, uh, the question is, is uh, why Oliver North? Well, I'm oh, just, um, actually, I'll you know, give you a little deep background. Mm -hmm. The way I operate, is basically um, in uh, three arenas of discourse. Mm -hmm. I make my paintings, and Oliver North, in, in this case, is uh, charcoal um, on canvas, part of a triptych, actually. Mm -hmm. And I make the paintings for three different arenas of reception. One, one is art galleries and hopefully maybe someday museums. Mm -hmm. And um, then I make the posters from the paintings, and uh, they're for the streets. Mm -hmm and um, trying to push out the envelope a little bit and reach a larger audience. Mm -hmm. Public art about a public subject. Mm -hmm. And then also I write art criticism for the LA Weekly mm -hmm. and uh, that's kind of my media outlet. Like, mm -hmm. this is a spin-off of that. You know, so, um, the whole mix, all the noise I make, uh, or whatever noise I make, um, in, uh, is actually my art, you know? Mm -hmm. All three. Uh, projects combined, mm -hmm. and um, Oliver North uh, is part of um, my public project, really. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm a very political person. I'm involved in, um, you know, reading ma uh, magazines and newspapers mm -hmm. about politics, and um, with the onset of, uh, let's say, a cro with encroaching adulthood, mm -hmm. I decided to paint uh, and make my art out of what was really important to me, and politics is pretty, pretty high up there, so, um, you know, watching the Iran Contragate hearings and everything, and my concern was that Ali um, would talk um, mm -hmm. and tell us what uh, he's been doing and what his junta, his secret junta, has been doing mm -hmm. in the name of representative democracy. Mm -hmm. So um, I made the poster, and, you know, I've taken it around. I've taken it to Washington, D.C., which was great, uh -huh. you know, my dream <laughs> destination. <laughs> And, uh, is everything what a tourist says it is? I mean, is it, is it a beautiful town? Well, you know, I had, <laughs> um, you know, the Iranians got their um, midnight tour of the White House uh -huh. from um, Hakim and North, and uh -huh. uh, I got my midnight tour of Washington, <laughs> driving around, uh, putting up posters, and uh, yeah, it was pretty exciting, you know, I was pretty thrilled to be there, and um, we actually did pretty well, you know, I was so stoked, you know, we got, um, I had a little help, people mm -hmm. helped me there, and people were very nice. But we got to put up posters, you know, right in front of the State Department, mm -hmm. right in front of the old executive office building, which is one of Ali's offices, mm -hmm. uh, right in front of the Supreme Court. I mean, it was spectacular. We really got around about mm -hmm. three or four hours of posting, skulking in Washington. Well, your work is so, I mean, just the graphics alone are so dynamic. And we, when you're, like, driving by, you see it. It's just Well, I think I learned something mind. from the other two posters. Uh -huh. You know, I, first I did Men With No Lips, mm -hmm. and um, that was really just a comment on... Um, the Reagan administration and really portraits of people in power. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just uh, partisan politics, mm -hmm. uh, but it's really about the effects of power and how power affects people uh, who are, you know, pursuing it, you know, mm -hmm. in a headlong fashion. How that changes them, mm -hmm. and uh, how then it can be so easily turned into abuses of power. So I'm looking at the newspapers, which I read vociferously, and. Um, mm -hmm hear all these pictures of these sour-faced men in suits mm -hmm. and ties, <laughs> you know, with this expression on their faces, and I, and, um, I realize it's all these people have so much power over mm -hmm. me and us, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I started making paintings of them, mm -hmm. and uh, kind of a form of adversary portraiture, you know, I try not to do caricatures, but just out of respect for their power and, and um, and, and also their personhood, you know. So their you, do you respect power? I have a lot of respect for power, uh -huh. especially, uh, you know, people who have power over me. Mm -hmm. and, um, and really my subject 
is power. You mm -hmm. know? Um, I'm interested in how it operates. Well, it's kind of interesting seeing the posters around town. It sort of brings these powerful, quote unquote, men and women yeah. uh, down to a street level where all of a sudden they're sort of, in a sense, I feel in a sense it's like almost like exposed uh, to the public. Well, that's, that's nice of you, Tosh. I mean, I'd like it to operate that way, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things about just making paintings, um, you know, and uh, the way I would phrase it is mm -hmm. um, just staying in your room playing with your crayons, mm -hmm. is that um, you just have a very limited audience mm -hmm. for uh, that kind of art activity. And it's circumscribed uh, institutionally and culturally, mm -hmm. you know, by what I... Uh, people have called the culture industry mm -hmm. and art institutions um, make a little cocoon around, uh, and a kind of elitist cocoon around this uh, kind of cultural activity, mm -hmm. and it doesn't really get out that much. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, there aren't that many people uh, in our society who uh, willingly go into museums and, and art galleries uh, mm -hmm. unless they're on some school trip and they get out of school for mm -hmm. the day, like when you remember mm -hmm. when you were a little kid. But um, this is public um, people mm -hmm. I'm making pictures about, and uh, I try to get it into a public arena. So well, it's kind of interesting because of um, uh, I think seeing because you have a show you had a you had a show at the Robert Berman Gallery, yeah, and seeing the posters. Well, actually, you have paintings too, like the the actual original portraits, correct? Right. And it the, starts with that. Right. Yeah, but black and white oil paint. When you see the posters uh, in a gallery and when you see it in the streets, I find it very much more, it's much more powerful seeing it on a street level. Well, I think, you know, they function differently. As uh -huh. I was saying, you know, I have, uh, trying to develop these dif different arenas of mm -hmm. discourse. So that, that's more traditional, uh, actually portrait painting. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, the subject matter is a little bit loaded, but, um, you know, it, it has a different way of operating and, mm -hmm. you know, people who go to art galleries and spend some time with the art, mm -hmm. um, you know, look at it, um, think about it a little bit, think about the people. Some of the paintings are relatively small, they're about two foot squares, and mm -hmm. some of them are very large, mm -hmm. like uh, seven by seven and a half foot head of Ronald Reagan or Nancy Reagan. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, they have one kind of effect. And, um, but they're for a specific audience, the people who go to museums and art galleries. Yes. And um, then the um, posters function, hopefully, mm -hmm. you know, on another level in a different way for mm -hmm. uh, a much more um, popularized audience, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I add the words, you know, I design them mm -hmm. kind of simply, keep them in black and white because it's cheap, mm -hmm. inexpensive, and, you know, this is all uh, my budget. I finance them myself, so mm -hmm. uh, I just do what I can to get the most uh, out of the least, you know. And um, I try to make them use a few simple advertising mm -hmm. techniques, but um, get them out there, you know, mm -hmm. where people can see them and think about them. Well, let me identify, okay, that the piece with the men or the men with, men without, with no lips. Men without lips. And this, this, this is so for the audience now, just in case. It's Ronald Reagan, right. Donald Reagan, Donald Reagan, yeah. Casper Weinberger, yeah. and James Baker III. Right, Secretary N of the Treasury. Okay, now, Ronald Reagan, I think, is pretty much ex you know, explainable. But yeah. what about the other men that you, find, you, that you feel compelled to do portraits of? Well, they're, they're, all in, uh, they're all in Reagan's cabinet. Uh -huh. They're all in the Reagan administration. Um, I conceived of this project before um, Iran Contra Gate, mm -hmm. you know, just from my own perceptions of um, what this administration was doing. Mm -hmm. And it's a combination of uh, just seeing these amazingly sour faces with these grim, tight lipped expressions mm -hmm. and the metaphorical quality of someone with being so unforthcoming, you know, mm -hmm. not telling the American people or the Congress for that matter, it mm -hmm. turns out, you know, what, what exactly they're doing. In the, but, but in the name of the people they represent, so I share that view with you. But why do people believe in uh, these people in power? Well, I think there's a segment of the population that you know, ideologically, mm -hmm. um, is aligned with them, mm -hmm. and they believe in what they're doing. And um, you know, I have a lot of respect for that. Obviously, Reagan got a tremendous mm -hmm. um, vote. You mm -hmm. know, uh, but on the other hand, maybe people um, didn't really know. Mm -hmm. exactly how he operated and, and uh, how that sector of mm -hmm. the power structure operated. And we're finding that out now, and that's what's so great about 
the Iran Contra mm -hmm. gate hearings is that you know it's an educational experience. We're actually getting uh, uh, a look into the secret uh, government. You know mm -hmm. how things um, go. What what goes on behind the scenes? Well, I think it's strange. important to know. It's kind of interesting because after the what twelve. 13 years of Watergate hearings. Yeah, and what have, we learned? What, ha what have we learned? It seems like it got worse. I mean, this is a lot worse than the Watergate. I think it's worse, but, uh, you know, it's just symptomatic, you know. I mean, this, this goes on. Excuse me what? while I have a little bit of your tea. Oh, please. There's a tea party here. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so helpful, too. Mm. Um, <laughs> the, um, I think we learn a little bit each time, and uh -huh. I think it's a, it's a almost like a, a great public exorcism, you know, and for a while, mm -hmm. everything is copacetic, you know, and then um, we tend to forget, the people in power tend to forget. It's part of the operation mm -hmm. and the structure of um, power that um, these things start to take hold again. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think uh, we're probably going to be due for more cycles of this. You can go back to the... Uh, Army McCarthy hearings, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I mean, I was a very little boy when that was happening, but uh, it had a lot of impact on the country, and and you know, the first TV show, mm -hmm. um, daytime summer soaps of um, what's going on, you know. You know, what's really interesting is the Watergate was like an all stations live, like ABC, NBC, yeah. Yeah. CBS, uh, every cable station probably in the country. But the, uh, the Iran-Contra uh, hearings are only on one station, I think this uh, one cable station and this PBS. Why do you think um, uh, CBS, NBC, and ABC not covering these hearings fully? Yeah, that's a good question, Tosh. I think there's an irony yeah. to it because... Um, and this is a lot worse than Watergate to me. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, really I don't know about charge. worse, you know, we're not going to judge here. <laughs> Yes, you know, we are going to judge. Oh, we are. Okay. <laughs> we are the judge. <laughs> Let the people be the judge. You know, let's get out there. Okay, we're the judges. I'm expressing the people's opinion. Right. Right. <laughs> um, well, I think that um, that you know Reagan is held in a lot more affection, for one thing, than uh, Nixon ever was, and also uh, I don't think. This is, I think, because it's more serious, mm -hmm. you're going to get less coverage in a in a funny sort of way, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, because it's harder uh, for a popular imagination to grasp exactly mm -hmm. what went on, because it's it's layered more deeply into the fabric of um, governmental structure. Um, it's not like a burglary. Er, burglary, everyone can relate to a burglary, you know. It's mm -hmm. oh, a second story job. I get it. You know, it's clear clear cut case on a superficial level. Mm -hmm. And this is a lot deeper. And I think it doesn't necessarily have that pop appeal. Um, and only with revelations. You know, Ali's going to be talking probably on the 7th. He's is already, he? Yeah, he's, <laughs> <laughs> he well, promise? whatever he says, yeah, he's promised. <laughs> whatever he says, we'll see. We, I mean, we are going to monitor him. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's accountability that we're talking about here. And whether we're the judges, we're certainly the people, not just you and I, but who these people um, you know, supposed to be representing us are ultimately accountable to. So, but the strange thing is, I'm so suspicious of general media. For instance, uh, what's her name, Fawn Hall? Fawn Hall. Yeah, she kind of spiffed it up a little bit. There. That's what I mean. It's, it's very show busy. But like well, that's what I'm trying to say. That that, that um, Iran Contragate isn't quite as show busy uh -huh. and isn't quite as uh, easy to grasp as uh, guys skulking around, you know, burgling uh, records. Although, you know, shredding is pretty spectacular and fawn is pretty spectacular. Why is mean, she spectacular? Well, she's just, <laughs> she's just spectacular, uh, you know, as a, as a classic stereotype, I uh -huh. think, and uh, feeds right into the media sensibility. Um, that's one of the reasons I probably stay away from her in my work, mm -hmm. is because uh, although I'm, you know, I'm interested mm -hmm. in uh, tackling media power. Mm -hmm. You know, I've used Joan Rivers and Women with Teeth mm -hmm. uh, for very specific reasons. One being she's one of my pet hates. Another uh, being that what she... It, what is it about Ms. Rivers that you don't like? I think what I dislike about her is that she um, she's kind of emblematic mm -hmm. of a person who will change everything about herself or, or himself mm -hmm. uh, to succeed on other people's terms. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I think it's a little scary, you know, as a role model mm -hmm. for American women, much less just Americans, you know. I mean, there are plenty of men mm -hmm. who have done the same thing. There's a, I mean, there's a layer of sadness, I think, poignancy about uh, Joan, you know, in that she's done all this, mm -hmm. you know, she's changed her nose, she's changed her face, she's changed her teeth, she's changed her personality. She I think she's got... I that. Really? Yeah. I think so. Ooh. I mean, <laughs> I mean, something for us to contemplate. Maybe. <laughs> um, she does look rather manufactured. Yeah, well, yeah. A good pretty package. much, pretty much um, signed, sealed, and delivered for success. You mm -hmm. know, <laughs> <laughs> and um, and basically, it still eludes her. You know, mm -hmm. the like say Johnny Carson dumb still mm -hmm. eludes her, mm -hmm. and I think part of that is still. Um, you know, a s serious business that I'm concerned with, and that is, you know, like a, a, an element of sexism at the top, you know. Yes. But aside from, you know, pushing that aside mm -hmm. for a moment, I still um, am a little upset that she might be a role model for people, you know, to do all these things to alter yourself mm -hmm. just to succeed in, uh, you know, what I consider to be, you know, very su superficial terms. You see millions of American women, like, sort of looking at Joan Rivers as the I see, the a, I see quite a few, you know. <laughs> I see that quite is, a that's few, a Tosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a horrifying yeah. thought. I, I see him. <laughs> yeah. Which brings up I Nancy think, Reagan. Yeah. Because she yeah. has that sort of that look, too. Nancy has that look. Um, maybe it's uh, more one of breeding than it is mm -hmm. of Jones, but uh, you know, Nancy's a very powerful person, and she, probably the reason I did Women with Teeth, teeth uh -huh. is... Uh, trying to figure out how Nancy operates, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I mm -hmm. think she operates behind her smile. And, uh, well, you it's know. funny, the press has been covering lightly about uh, how she's hinting, you know, they sort of hint more of these, these things, yeah. about uh, how she has a lot more say in the White House than, than other uh, uh, First Ladies. I think she has a lot more say in the White House than a lot of people. Uh -huh. you know? <laughs> Certainly more than Don Regan had. <laughs> you know, she showed that. And um, would you like to be the fly in the wall when they're like talking to each other? It might be interesting. Well, I think, you know, on a certain level, mm -hmm. you know, let's say that on a certain level, we can talk about gossip. You know, I mean, I think elevated gossip is something that. Um, I'm afraid I occasionally will touch on. You know, oh, I mean, gossip it, is good. It's healthy. like. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, it's meaningful too. It's I mean, very meaningful. but um, back to Nancy. There is a point I like to make about Nancy. You know, and and mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is the flip side. You know, of women wielding power mm -hmm. um, with grim smiles mm -hmm. or false smiles mm -hmm. um, and operating. I think there's a gender specific mm -hmm. um, power operation going mm -hmm. on here. Uh, because roles are so circumscribed mm -hmm. in our society, you know, uh, male-female roles, and it's such a patriarchal society mm -hmm. uh, that women have to operate in uh, a little more devious and subtle way. Mm -hmm. um, and one of them is this social false smile, mm -hmm. you know, we're using that as a metaphor. Mm -hmm. um, and you know that behind it, um, they're really operating like crazy, and also, metaphorically, their teeth are sharp. Mm -hmm. you know. We should identify the other two women. Um, Margaret, Margaret Thatcher, Thatcher and Jean Kirkpatrick, yes. who uh, used to be uh, our ambassador to the United Nations, uh -huh. and, and is probably um, the ideological power behind the New Right. Uh -huh. you know, she's she's the, the figurehead, the brains? Not a figurehead. Uh -huh. She Behind had, the scenes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she's, she's the mind of, uh -huh. um, of the... Um, of the new right. Have you heard any, uh, any response from the new right or old right or any right? Right uh, guard? You know, <laughs> you know, that's where we get back to the fly on the wall. I uh -huh. think, uh, it, I don't really think I'm that important. You know, <laughs> I'm not having that kind of effect mm -hmm. uh, that I would have repercussions. You, know? you would like to, though, in that, in, that, in that sense. Well, I'm not power crazed. No, but, but, but just to, to, to but get, I, you know, to get I'm, I'm still, I'm a little startled um, that at the, um, at the response, mm -hmm. like like being here, you know, mm -hmm. I'm a little I'm a little startled at the response mm -hmm. that the posters have had um, anyway, you uh -huh. know, because the way I thought of it, you know, when I was doing it was that it's pretty much a traditional mm -hmm. uh, agitprop form, mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's about a public subject, 
Mm -hmm. You know, it's public art about a public subject. What could be more straightforward? Mm -hmm. You do these things and you go put them. And it's not propaganda per se, mm -hmm. and I'm very try to be very careful about that. You know, I mean, women with teeth isn't saying, uh, you know, let's go out and uh, destroy the state. Yes. Uh, and I'm not paid by. Uh, the Democratic National Committee. No. You know, I mean, so you, would, you would do the same thing for Democrats. It's not a party I think, thing. I think we'll have a good time. I'm really looking forward uh -huh. to 1988. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll have a good time with the uh, presidential uh -huh. elections. And, uh -huh. and, um, the posters seem to now um, uh, have developed a, a little bit of a life of their own. So. Mm -hmm. They keep popping. I was going to ask you about that because I know around town, you know, it's like the posters are tearing. Yeah. They're changing. People are writing graffiti. How do I you feel about graffiti. that? I love the graffiti. I love the graffiti. I mean, in my that's in my that's my feedback. Mm -hmm. You know, um, aside from you know some attention I might be getting mm -hmm. in the media, the the feedback that I cherish is uh, the graffiti and what happens on the streets. Mm -hmm. You know, and I have a little bit of a collection of you know some of the responses. Yeah, yeah, photographs of uh -huh. what how they've been altered, what's been done to them in New York, Washington, uh -huh. um, in the in L.A. Uh -huh. And uh, I find that really interesting. You know, because of uh, because uh, like when I went to back to the Berman Gallery, yeah, uh, you had a poster. Did you did you actually did the graffiti on it? Actually, it's a it was a blow up. Uh -huh. Excuse me again. Oh please, it's a tea party. <laughs> Great stuff, Tosh. <laughs> what a concept. <laughs> um, it's actually a a photostat mm -hmm. blow up of a poster uh, with graffiti on. It. Well, that's a question. Is it possible? I mean, your mind. Uh, or anybody's mind, in fact, uh, to be an artist in the 20th century, is it possible not to be political? Do you think that to be an artist is, is like a political statement in itself? Well, I think everything's political. Uh -huh. You know, as far as that goes, um, you know, Leon Trotsky's told me time and time again, Rob, everything's political. <laughs> you know? And uh, it just... Um, and therefore, his death was political. His death was political, and uh -huh. he's still alive. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think just, you know, as long as you engage, mm -hmm. engage um, life, mm -hmm. it, it has pol a political uh, resonance. Mm -hmm. and, um, and if you don't, if you choose not to, mm -hmm. that can also be political in a negative way. I you know? find that strange. Like, yeah. for instance, when I hear, like, music or something, yeah. them not mentioning anything is sort of like a political statement in itself. No, no, really on a left or right wing, or it's just sort of a statement in itself, I feel. Well, anything that's void. part of the cultural mix, uh -huh. you know, has uh, has a political overlay. Okay, you write uh, criticism for the LA Weekly. Do you yeah. see? Fr is it political? that you your viewpoints? Yeah, of course. It mm -hmm. comes from me, and um, you know, it's my perspective on mm -hmm. art, and it's my perspective on you know how art and the culture industry mm -hmm. uh, that we're a part of, mm -hmm. um, and art institutions that are you know, even a closer set, mm -hmm. uh, are enmeshed, their place mm -hmm. within this constellation that we call culture mm -hmm. and economics and mm -hmm. politics. And um, I look at it uh, critically, mm -hmm. you know, from that viewpoint. You know, um, Douglas, when you talk about exhibitions and museums mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. art institutions, uh, to paraphrase someone like Douglas Crimp writing mm -hmm. about uh, art institutions, mm -hmm. You know, he would say something like, um, is there just an art of exhibition? Mm -hmm. You know, isn't there also a politics of exhibition? Yes. And of course and it's definitely. true, you know, Absolutely. like museums like MoCA, uh -huh. you know, which uh, are developer funded, yes. um, you know, institutions that are very political. Uh -huh. You know, you have the economic community. Mayor Bradley and the mm -hmm. administration of Los Angeles. Well, it's funny, your first thing all working together. Like the other county museum, first thing you see when you walk in is like all the names of the people who. Yeah, the and all the donors and stuff. And it's, uh, in fact, uh, my dad was an artist. Uh, he always said that about museums that, uh, or whatever, he's always the last one to get paid. The janitors get paid. The everybody, get, <laughs> every, everybody who works in the office get paid before he actually gets paid. Well, yeah, artists uh, <laughs> feel like, you know, I guess blue collar. Uh -huh. um, that's not so much. I don't think that's so true, uh, you know. It, anymore, but I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we, we talk about cultural institutions for a minute and art institutions for a minute. We were talking, mm -hmm. you know, yesterday about uh, how demeaning it can be yes. <laughs> for a young artist mm -hmm. to go around to galleries, mm -hmm. commercial galleries, and, and show them their slides and say, yes. please, please show yeah. me, you know, and, and these guys, you know, have uh -huh. such an attitude. And, um, 
you know, one of the things that um, that strikes me about uh -huh. this whole project, say the poster uh -huh. project. And well, stuff. let me ask you a question. Speaking of the posters, how do you, uh, how do you, what's the process of uh, pasting the posters up around town? What do you do? Well, um, I go I in the Do you have assistance or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, I, I take, uh, we go in the glue mobile, which is my car. Uh -huh. And it's the, we dub it the glue mobile because it's now full of glue that we use for the posters. It gets everywhere. You guys don't get high in there, do you? It's not that kind oh, of glue. Good. I mean, that's airplane glue. Uh -huh. We're talking, <laughs> well, you know, well, who's your Honda you have, Civic you have, glue. You have a particular assistant who helps you in I this have, case? I have friends who help me, and I have my best and greatest assistant uh -huh. who happens to be right here. Where? And maybe come up and say hello. Oh, this is, and who is this This is man? Danny. Well, Hi, Danny. You. Pleased to meet you. Thank you. you, you I, I gather you know your dad. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> a partner in crime. I want to say hi to your mom and Gretel. <laughs> hi, Mom. Hi, Gretel. Let's Hi, Gretel. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to have to say goodbye now, Danny. Kay. Well, you can stay here, Steph, if you want. Yeah, just come on over so, here. Uh, sit with me for a minute. World, goodbye. Um, what's your future plans really fast? Uh, I've got a new poster coming up. Who of uh, who? I'm no. sworn to secrecy. Okay. But that will be a surprise. Well, you want, if anybody in Los Angeles, Chicago, New York, we'll definitely see in the near yeah, future. Yeah, and we're also going to Austin, Great. Texas, and Houston. Great. So well, we're going to a little bit. Well, world, I'm afraid I'm going to have to go back to Santa Monica Beach to do some more uh, sandology uh, investigation, my main interest. So, ladies and gentlemen, goodbye. Thank you very much. <laughs>